Hi, everybody. My name is Joseph Goodman of Goodman Games. Let me pass the baton to Chris to introduce himself. Hey, everybody. I'm Chris, the uh, Director of Development and Design for 5e at Goodman Games. And that would make me Michael Curtis, the Director of Product Development for Dungeon Crawl Classic here at Goodman Games. So, welcome. So welcome, everybody. <laughs> so, this is the Dungeon Denizens launch show. On my clock, it is 58 minutes after the hour, and we said we would launch in two minutes. So, I'm going to I'm going to actually be quiet and let you guys talk amongst yourselves because I'm going to go fiddle with the green button over here that launches the Kickstarter <laughs> so that we can launch on schedule. <laughs> so talk amongst yourselves. Okay. Well, I hope folks are excited for a monster of a book, and that's the first of many puns coming. <laughs> this is monster. <laughs> this book is a beast. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Two oh, points. <laughs> Let's see if yes. we get to ten by the end of the show. <laughs> Every, hey, everybody! If you guys have any questions, uh, put them in the chat. We're monitoring the chat as we go along. Um, we've got a bunch of things that we're gonna kind of talk about. If you didn't catch our preview show, um, you know we can go over some of the things uh, that we discussed in there. Some of the cool add-ons, uh, some of the stretch goals, and uh, yeah, we're basically just here to answer questions and to hopefully get this off to a uh, a rip roaring start. All right, I got all the buttons checked. Can we get a countdown and then I'll push the button? Okay. Uh, Should we start at like 97 or more like 10? <laughs> Why? <laughs> I'm thinking 500. Yeah. I think that's yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, 555, counting backwards. All right, let's <laughs> All right. All right, 10, 9, 8, eight seven, 7, 6, 6, six five, 5, 5, 4, four, four three, 2, <laughs> One, one go go i click the button and it's refreshing there it goes okay, <laughs> okay. Refreshing. okay oh, yeah. there's live quick who's gonna be number right. one <laughs> yeah who's gonna there it is. who's been who's been frantically hitting f5 for you know the last three years so yeah they're, so they're, they're, they're getting their information in we've overwhelmed them with all the add-ons they're they're, they're, <laughs> they're adding stuff to their cart as we speak Right. <laughs> I think I can see who's backer number one on here somewhere. Well, Let's see. We should give them a shout out. Two backers already. Jim Sketch. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this is uh, not a core. It is not a core book. He's the got it wrong. Four backers. Jeremy Schumann it. is our number one. Oh, by Honcho Villa and Jonathan Major. So thanks you guys for supporting nice. us. We have three backers. <laughs> I got five on my screen. Uh, it's like seven, eight. I'm up to eight. Yeah, it's off. It's off and running. We're three hours off ahead. and running. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So I figured we could use this time to like maybe uh, answer questions, like Chris said. And the other thing was, uh, um, oh, I was going to talk about international shipping, mostly because we have people on the Dying Earth Kickstarter who are. <laughs> I mean, I'd be upset too. It's kind of expensive to ship stuff across the ocean. Um, but I want to tell you what we're doing for Dungeons and Dungeons and what, what will benefit some other stuff other projects. Mike, Chris, anything else you guys want to talk about before I talk about that? Sure. By the time you get done talking to that, we're maybe going to be funded already. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll try to keep it shorter than that. But uh, <laughs> so short version is DCC Dying Earth. For those of you who don't realize, if you pledged $100 for it, you're actually getting three box sets instead of what you thought was one. So <laughs> the amount of value you get out of this is crazy. It's almost $300 worth of product and it weighs close to, I think it's actually over seven pounds was the final count. So realize you're getting far more product than you might think you are from the pledge amount, which is part of the reason the shipping is more expensive. Um, so just be aware that when you go to look at it, you're not getting one box set, you're getting three huge box sets for the price. But for Dungeon Denizens, what we've done is we have uh, worked out some arrangements with shipping partners in the UK, Australia, and Canada. So we'll actually be originating the shipments of Dungeon Denizens from those places, um, which means we'll save you guys on VAT or customs if you're in those markets. and. You know, we can't teleport the product there. It still has to get there. <laughs> but so shipping will be less because we can freight it over there, but it will still be expensive because it's shipping internationally. Awesome. Yeah. So, Man, well, it's yeah, good that, to see the pledges rolling. Yeah, that was quick. I, I thought we were going to be a lot longer. Yeah, we're uh, almost at 3,000 already. It gets faster with practice. It does. Yeah. <laughs> but by the time the Kickstarter ends, we'll have everything wrapped up in three minutes. That, you know. <laughs> oh. Somebody asked about a deck of cards. You know that I, you know that's actually a great idea. I don't know that we can offer a deck of cards with this project because we 
have sort of pre-prepped a lot of the stuff for the specific project. But like by the time we get to the backer kit or, you know, further down the road, that might be something we could include as an add on. That's yeah. a really interesting idea. Although um, 500 cards is a lot of cards. Isn't that's a lot of cards. cards. Only like I, 53. Like, like yeah. 10, you know, like 10 decks of cards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and and to be honest with you, with the stat boxes <laughs> for the five E, they don't really fit on a card. I think for the DCC, mm. it would work where you could have the yeah. art on one side and you could have the DCC stats on the back. Mm. But to be honest with you, I, I've seen some other ones do the stats and they do like an abbreviated stat form for the five E, and I'm not sure it's the most useful thing out there. Um, but that's just my opinion. But I, I agree, it would be cool yeah. to have a card that you can hold up and then have all the stats on the back. That would be kind of neat. We give you those big like tarot size cards, but at that point, yeah. or flash I mean, but five hundred that'd be really expensive. <laughs> That's not like yeah, that would be yeah. pretty pretty expensive. With cut full color on one side, yeah. Oh, he <laughs> says he doesn't oh. need stats. He just wants the art. Oh, if it's just art, I suppose that'd be easier. You can't you print out the VTT tokens and just make them kind of big and just like. <laughs> print them on your printer <laughs> but i think he wants us to do it for him to save him oh 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 okay so we can put them in a microsoft word template so you just you know run it through your printer that's, that's like like making business cards right that's, along with a dot matrix printer we'll sell a dot matrix printer and the files to print at home no i like the idea of the cards we won't be able to do that here but down the road that's that's a good idea and then somebody also asked about question. Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. I had a question about the dust jackets. And uh, so he said, when we add the dust jacket later, I assume that means in backer kit post funding. That's, that's usually. Yeah, right. so, yeah, exactly. So anything that's custom to the project, what happens is when the Kickstarter ends and we had, you know, 52 people buy it or whatever, I always print about plus 10% to that, mostly because the post office always loses some or they get damaged or whatever. So we usually have to have that amount plus five to 10% to fulfill it. Um, so there will be some additional dust jackets um, once we're done fulfilling that will be available later on in the backer kit. Um, but since the dust jackets are specific to this project, you're, and they're kind of cheap, they're only five bucks. So your best bet is try to pledge for one here. That way we'll make sure we have one available later on. The items that are going to be available in distribution, we'll have printed extra of, for, so they'll be more readily available post-campaign, if that makes sense. Yep. And and Jib Cutter has a question about actually using a second Kickstarter account to get the other <laughs> Uh, limited edition book you should be able to add that on um when you when you click and then you do your add-ons you can add on the other book in the other system correct it should be set up that way it, it's, yep. if we screwed it up let us know but yeah if you pledge for say dcc limited edition and go through the checkout process and kickstarter it should have an add-on option for the like the five-year limited edition or vice versa cool yes yeah and if we screwed it up let us know we can go in the back and try to fix it <laughs> Yeah, already. How many inches of shelf space should there be <laughs> all in space? <laughs> um, almost, I don't know. We had that almost up. at 10,000. Awesome. Uh, We're going to probably fund, you know, probably 15 minutes or so, maybe. <laughs> It'd be awesome. You, yeah. If you want to know, do you have a copy of, of uh, you know, of Weird Frontiers? You know, that whatever it is, we'll probably be able to fit into less size than that. That's, that's, yeah. that's also. All right. So Tim is saying the DCC all in doesn't include dust jackets and he can't see the, a way to add them. Hmm. I have like a dummy account that I use to like log in and verify things. Let me log in with my dummy account and make sure it's set up right. Daredevil's in for the DCC version. Awesome um four feet for shelf space yeah it's probably about right so <laughs> say about four calyx shelves yeah, maybe three calyx shelves might do it uh, uh, yep father goose just... 83 went all in and added the dust jackets so it must be possible yeah let me just verify in my end too mm -hmm. maybe there's something there's quirky things about how these things are set up sometimes so we'll double check just to be sure can I add the regular cover as an add-on? I think so. I believe we set it up so you, should, so you could add it as an add-on. Yeah. Oh, we are Certainly. cranking along. Almost at 14K. All right, cool. So, yeah, so I'm actually, I'm using my dummy account here to pledge. And yeah, when I log in as DCC All-In, or sorry, pledge for DCC All-In, I then see add-ons. So you got to go to the second screen if that helps anybody. And then you'll see a bunch of add-ons and it includes 
the you know various dust jackets and other stuff yeah a couple of people it sounds like they're they're not seeing the regular cover as an add-on option though it looks like oh you're right i don't actually oh, see the regular cover wait, as an add-on. No, tim, tim said okay found it um after I, actually, I don't see the regular cover as an add-on i see tons of add-ons but not that oh wait read more no here let me actually so good call out let me go in and click some buttons and see what oh. we need to do We want you to get what you want. Yes. <laughs> no. Yep. Yep. Tim has confirmed he found the dust jackets, but not the regular cover. Okay. Let me see if I can get this set up. Dust jackets. Dust jackets. I think you're right. I mean, not that I ever doubted you, but I don't, <laughs> there's a lot of quirks in how the add ons work. And sometimes they add on to one pledge, not the other, and whatever, but I don't actually see the regular. Uh, Regular edition in here, so let me put that in. So you want to this. getting the fixes in real time? <laughs> yeah, it's customer service right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it, it takes a while to talk amongst yourselves. I have to like click uh, a bunch of buttons and. Well, we're almost at sixteen thousand on my screen. Yep. So we are closing, closing in on. Did Did you actually launch it right at, at noon, or did you launch it a couple of minutes earlier? According to Elena's count, I was like. But I was like 10 seconds late, I think. That's what she was okay. implying with her tone. <laughs> she she <laughs> confirms I was 10 seconds late. 10 seconds late. The, yes. And, and then there was the other the side of the glass. And, you know, they, they, so, there's like a five second lag. So, you know. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, and we're yeah, going to, these Kickstarter aims when we hit 20,000, right? That's the plan. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. all go home. We all go home. And... <laughs> No, doesn't that mean, uh-oh, we have to start designing monsters? <laughs> <laughs> we already did that. What? <laughs> what have you been doing for the last two years? <laughs> well, the Denison's dust jacket fit the core hardback. Um, we won't know until we yeah. actually get the, the book printed. So, you know. Yes. Uh, but oh, the core I'm, GCC, you mean? Assuming, yeah. yeah. It, it's just, so the spy, so there's two options for dust jackets. Or sorry, there's many options, but there's two spine width options because they're actually going to fit the additions of the books. I wouldn't bet on it fitting the DCC core book. But if I hear you correctly, what you're really saying is you want dust jackets for the DCC core book, right? Because it's funny, Mike, that we were just talking about that. Do you want to tell them what we've been thinking about? Um, uh, we were we were thinking about uh, we were thinking about doing actually uh, what we're doing here. We were talking about uh, uh, about uh, doing some of the kind of the classic um, some of the, the classic kind of limited edition um, uh, rule book uh, covers, which aren't available anymore. Like you know, like the the Fire Wizard or the Jeff Easley. Uh, and then uh, we also might be pulling some of the art from the some one more popular adventures. As in also doing these as dust jackets, uh, oh, you know, as virgin art dust jackets, kind of what we're doing here. So, you know, so if you never, if you, if you missed out getting like the Jeff Easley cover, uh, because that was been out of print for a while, it was limited edition, we could at least, you can at least pretend you got it by getting a dust jacket. And <laughs> it right There's one thing about gamers we know how to do is pretend. So, <laughs> So, nice. so the, the so the core the core DCC book is about four hundred and about four hundred and eighty pages, uh, four hundred eighty two or four hundred eighty pages. So, even even with one monster per page, the uh, you know the the uh, Dungeon Dennis's book is going to be bigger. <laughs> so you know, good point. Okay, so, so we have a why, couple. I have, to have a copy of this John's lying right next to me. It's almost like you know, it's almost so, like I use it regularly. So Jib Gutter's got a question about DCC and 5e was there discussing between oh. both teams on statting and such between both versions of the same creature. I, I think we're about to fund. Yes. All right. So yes, yeah, so we're we'll get to that question in a second. We'll get to that question watching. I think watching the next the person might put us over. And there we go. We'll find it. There it is. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> So wow, That's so that was uh, thirteen minutes, fourteen minutes. How yeah, about like that? that? That's awesome. Yes, awesome. Thank you guys very. Oh, and we're just blowing right past it. So, uh, yes. So back to um, questions. So yeah. So again, in 
th this was not exactly the, the the most perfectly executed project um from when we started yes, it was what are you talking about what are you oh talking yeah about? okay sorry yeah that's right it was actually it was all according to our master plan all uh, the whole yes. way um <laughs> So yeah, so we so for the most part we started with the five E creatures and then we passed over the five E creatures to the DCC team. Uh, it did come back somewhere. Like, for example, there were some of the creatures that were in the dice tubes that were already DC, and we did actually send those back to the five E team uh, for conversions. So uh, so yeah, so you're gonna get they're 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 probably gonna be very different as far as the the, the feel and the statistics. Obviously, how they work, the systems are not exact. Obviously, the art's gonna be the same for the most part. The lore is gonna be the same. Um, there's some tweaks with the lore for sometimes when things uh, don't work out. Obviously, if there was a magic item for one, the magic item is going to be different or a new spell or whatnot. Um, but yeah, so that's basically how you got it. So really, these these critters went through. They went through several iterations over time between the editing teams and um, and the design teams. It's probably also worth noting, many of them were play tested extensively at various eras in the game's history, either when they were originally published or, you know, at some point when they were converted or somewhere along the line. So you're not only getting, you know, stats conversion, but stats, I don't know, optimization or play test optimization, whatever word you want to use. Mike, do you want to comment on MCC fitting these monsters into MCC? Yeah, uh, you just you open your MCC rulebook and you start running MCC and then you use this book. <laughs> <laughs> Do I open it left or right or right to left? <laughs> no, it's, it's, not, <laughs> it's not manga. You know, you, you read it the right way. You know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've been doing wrong. Okay. So, uh, you know, MCC and DCC are perfectly compatible. So you theoretically you don't have to change anything at all. I mean, you know, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's not, it's, you know, I mean, I, I, I I, there's nothing really that is stopping you. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so. Uh, I see. I, 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 Bob, the magic cone, um, magic cone, magic one, magic one. <laughs> looks like magic cone. I was like, the a magic, magic cone. cone. I was really? like, oh, a magic cone sounds like a really tasty ice cream, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> says big monsters. Um, I assume you mean like gargantuan, like big as like big um so yeah we we do have uh we i would say we would have there's numerous monsters godzilla sized monsters in this book including some some new rules on how to uh to kind of play them at the table um so definitely oh yeah i see that's a really big squid thing and um and more talk about the dungeon delves book uh Mike, do you want to start on Dungeon Delves, or do you want me to start? I mean, you know, I can start about it. So, so I think we we touched on it in the the, the kind of pre-launch show. Uh, but basically, the, the point is is the Dungeon Delves is going to be right now we're preaching probably around sixteen or so. You know, uh, basically two page dungeons. So it will be you know it will be kind of a you know like a half page map. And then, you know, a little bit of art to it. And then the rest of the, the landscape will be, you know, describing the encounter or the dungeon or, you know, whatever it is. And we're going to make them, uh, we're going to make them, you know, uh, usable between either whether you're running 5th edition or whether you're running DCC. So we're going to make it, you know, multi-system, system neutral, whatever you want to call it. So the way we're going to do that basically is we're going to use just monsters either from the Dungeon Denison's book. So, you know, it might be, you know, like, the, you know, you might be running to six Zol Zolopani or, you know, uh, and then we won't have to point, we won't have to take up any space with a stat block in there because you will have your easy reference D uh, Dungeon Denison's book. Or we'll only won't be using monsters that you know are available in like orcs. You know, <laughs> it's like you know, if if you can't find a stat block for orcs, you know, in either version of it, you know, you're 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 doing something horribly wrong. You might not be actually playing a role playing game. So, um, so so the idea is basically they will be able to be used for no matter which system you're going to do. We'll probably have an ETE to translate for like core mechanic type thing because you know DCC doesn't pay any attention to like bonded accuracy. So you know, so like the the D's the DCs tend to be a bit lower than they are. In in 5e you're like like a kind of an average one in 5e is about 15 where like one in dcc is more like 10 so there might be something like we might listen like it is a you know it was an average difficulty to pick this lock and then you can look at the front of the book and there will be like a chart and they'll say okay if i'm running 5e then it's a dc 15 or and if i'm running you know dcc it's dcc 10 you know i mean it's really 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 straightforward stuff um but you know it, it'll give you a chance to actually see the monsters in their natural environment kind of like wild kingdom but you know, far more lethal. 
And yes, you could use it in TSR Buck Rogers. We'll provide a, we'll provide yes. a conversion guide. <laughs> yes. We're gonna get on the phone with Lorraine Williams right now and make sure they're cool with the, the Buck mm -hmm. Rogers estate. So. <laughs> yeah. So for those of you who wanted the add-ons of the core books, they I don't know how long it takes to like propagate, but they're now added on the back end and hopefully within a minute or two you should see them show up when you when you make a pledge and do an add-on. Joe, did you also do the DCC limited edition hardcover? Yes, I see okay. that comment. It it should cool. be if you refresh, hopefully it is now visible. Cool. Uh, and it is it is up to the individual judge or or dungeon master whether orcs have pig noses or not. Hmm. I like Tim's comment, Tim White, about an extra fancy stomp the typo. You know what we should do, guys? I know our mom, you know, our books are always perfect. We should hide one typo in this book. <laughs> and, and We're really way ahead of you, Joe. Promise. Yeah, oh, yeah. Jeez, I think we've, we've nailed that goal already. <laughs> uh, whoever finds the one typo gets a reward. I was going to say, that's good. We have a lot to choose from if we are only allowed one. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, somebody got a typo in the VTT tokens. Oh, and I think if I think if it's uh, thank you, Card the, Arcade. Would that be called the wrong art? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I don't think I can change it once somebody pledges for it. So yeah, Dungeon Dice is actually Dungeon Denizens. I guess I was typing too many things at once. Let's see where to go. Ah, oh, you're right. And it won't let me edit it. All right. Well, it's not actually dice. <laughs> it's VTG tokens, <laughs> not of dice, but of monsters. <laughs> no matter how many pairs of eyes you poke into something, you know. <laughs> I know. What amazes me is, like, say I was on the Starless Sea, as of, like, the sixth printing, we were still finding typos. It's just amazing how they mm -hmm. sneak in and you just can't even see them, you know. And so, sometimes, sometimes they, sometimes they, they come in from nowhere. <laughs> as, 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 as we literally we had, we had several prints of the DCC core book that there was no issues with, and then suddenly the luck modifier incident suddenly <laughs> like, caused all sorts of chaos. And like, how did this get in here? And that was like the first, the first day one of my new job. I was like, get that out of here! And I said, get, get out of there with a, with a, with a pole. That's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. By the way, I'm going to switch my camera view so if you guys can see the shirt. I'm actually wearing a mock-up of the uh, – here you go – of the shirt that we offer as an add-on in my stupid regular camera. It follows me around, so if I try to lean down to show it to you, it just follows my head. But anyway, leaves, it's a cool shirt. Leaves his office, follows him around to the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it would do chores. Like, sweet, but unfortunately, it just follows me. Yes, long live the OSR, Orcus Porcus. Have to agree there. Yeah, uh, 500 monsters is kind of a lot. It took a lot to pull this off, but I'm glad we did. Of a lot. It's like a <laughs> real lot. <laughs> it's like, it, it, took, it took like three years to actually do the hard work, but it took more like 20. To actually yeah. It felt like 20. <laughs> Some of those, go, some of these go back to you know, like the early eighties, you know. Yeah, it's not really. Yeah. The, it's not really the years; it's the mileage. So, <laughs> thanks, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what amount of time until funded? I think we decided it was twelve minutes or thirteen minutes before we funded. So, plus something ten like seconds, that, yeah. something like that. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of these critters started out in DCC modules way back when. Or not even necessarily DCC modules, Goodman Games products way back when, um, and were play tested along the way in third edition, and later on some were converted to fourth edition, which we won't speak of, and later on some were converted <laughs> to fifth edition or GCC rule set. So a lot of them have had a lot of mileage, not just in terms of this, you know, current uh, iteration, but lots of good play testing and actual gameplay along the way. Yeah, and and then we've been doing um, some ongoing play testing since. So our our editors actually flag specific designs that they called out. Um, needing play testing, and I know one of our editors actually um, created a, a battle map of an arena, and he was actually running basically like arena battles in his home campaign, and also on That's online awesome. conventions. And basically, it was like here's some PCs, here's a monster from the book, <laughs> and then face it. And then when you defeat that one, oh look, here's another monster from that book, which I thought was a really kind of a cool way to kind of you know run through a whole bunch of of monsters to actually play test them. So. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, that's a cool idea. The Thunderdome School of Playtesting. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> I like the idea of an add-on to take a ride in the Goodman Games Wizard Band. <laughs> so my dream Kickstarter someday would be to fund driving the Wizard Band across the country, you know, and like we stop in each city and run some games and like, I'm making this up, but I'm on the first in from California to Texas. Then somebody else takes the next 500 miles to wherever, and somebody takes the next 500 miles. And, we, and then, you know, stretch goals are like a new carburetor. <laughs> you know, like, or, you know, fix the transmission, yeah. <laughs> like stuff like that. <laughs> so that would be cool. Although, I mean, I don't know how realistic this is on so many levels, but it'd be cool to do sometime. Yeah, and the 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 you know it's one of those things. that the sooner we do this, the better because you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. it, considering somebody threw out their knee walking today, you know, I mean, it, <laughs> yeah. the idea of traveling around in the van is not as enticing as it was say twenty years ago. You know, <laughs> I know. Plus, the van itself is you know it had to be towed to Gen Con. <laughs> it drove like a total of like a hundred yards to Gen Con from the like the parking lot into the stadium. Mm. But uh, you know, it's mostly rust. My favorite part of that. <laughs> experience was when we're all worried about COVID and I was talking to Wayne and I was like, you know, what's our COVID policy going to be like for playing in the van? Do you have to wear masks or whatever? And Wayne was like, don't worry about COVID, worry about tetanus. Like, who has their tetanus shots? Like riding the tetanus van. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh. So, all right, so we, there was a question about, uh, let's see, do, do, where was it? Um, Stuff with how, how long how long till we know if design uh, design backward monsters will happen uh so the answer to that is i think what 10 more people yeah no, 500 no. Back. yeah uh, it's yeah. uh yeah 500 backers i have to find or, the graphic yeah. it's 500 right yeah 500, yeah, 500. Backers. so so if we we're get, at 445 so yeah we're, we're probably like 20 minutes we'll so. be adding at least two more monsters yeah. to the book so yeah yep. yeah no. Who asked that? Was that <laughs> clearly whoever asked that wants to put a monster in the book? I think so. That, uh, I hope so. Tim White. Okay, Tim. Noted. <laughs> yep. Uh, how many of the five hundred monsters are used in the Dungeon Dells books? We don't know yet. It's still a work in progress. You know, we're still yep. we're, we're still writing these and everything. So, um, I, I I a a fraction of the five hundred, considering we're looking probably <laughs> about sixteen to twenty event, you know, Dells in there. So you know, even you know that we'd have to use what fifty? <laughs> no, not even. <laughs> Yeah, something. Yeah, it I, won't be five hundred. It'll be nope. yes. fifty to one hundred, maybe. But, yeah. But just awesome. for an example, I wrote one of the delves, and I used four different monsters from Dungeon Denizens in it. So, so yeah, and that's in a two pager. I got four different, you know, stat boxes that you could use. So, um, and I think the other ones I was looking at too, um, probably had about that. Probably had three, three or. Four Three to five, probably different um, monsters in in the little in the little mini crawl. So, um, you know, you're gonna get a hundred ish, probably easy. So, yeah. uh, the history prof wants to know if there'll be copies at Game Hole uh, or Gary Con. Yes. Uh, in, in, he didn't Hall. specify what year. But yes, right. Yeah. Yeah. They they 2024. Yeah. We got you our, covered. Our hope is to have them at all of our booths for sale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And somebody named DJ LaBoss wants to know what Dungeons Denizen would be the best one to have a coffee with. Hmm. Mm. I guess it depends on what kind of coffee, really. Yeah. Maybe the coffee elemental. I'm <laughs> oh, just kidding. It's not in there. It's <laughs> we, not in there. We totally need to add that. That's but could be an idea. But could be an idea for one of the backers to create the coffee elemental. You might have a. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you all jittery. What is the most fascinating denizen to you? Um, I have a fondness for, believe it or not, I did not create this one, but there is a clockwork cube, which is essentially a gear work construct developed by gnomes that's essentially a gelatinous cube. It's basically a 10 foot by 10 foot Roomba. But imagine buzz saws <laughs> and grabbers and stuff like that. And I actually play tested it. I play tested it. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we I actually finally got around to getting it into what would fit in in the design. We were in a gnomish academy, um, and uh, Terry Olson's lizard folk fighter ran right up to it, and he was all ready to start showing it, you know, introducing it to his warhammer to the business end of his warhammer. And then you know, because he's like, well, I can see the thing; I don't have to worry about blundering into it like a regular Jatinus cube. Not realizing that the thing has grabbers, and it grabbed him and pulled him <laughs> into the into the thing and started grinding him up until the barbarian 
pull him out so that he didn't turn into um, a suitcase, a, a lizard folk suitcase. So it was great. It was, it was, it's, it's moments like that when he's standing up next to them and he had no idea. And the thing just, that's the whole beauty about new monsters. And the thing just had this grabber and pulled him into the array. You cannot, you, you can never have too many of those moments at your game table. So that's one of my that's favorites. Awesome. That's awesome. And Daredevil, I see your comment there. What kind of coffee would Steve the Monster drink? Hmm. Something with a hint of cardamom, I think. He's very sophisticated. <laughs> Zofogolani, is that how we say it? <laughs> Pumpkin spice. Pumpkin yes. spice. Pumpkin spice. Like Denizens <laughs> run on Duncan. That's pretty funny. We actually have this uh, really cool... Um, so Lester, the layout wizard, who did this shirt, also did... Actually, I got to show this. Hold on. Elena, I'm going to probably drive you nuts here. I'm going to email you a file. <laughs> Hold on. Let me find it. And maybe you could like show it on the screen or something. Hold on. I haven't. Okay, Elena, I'm going to drop this in the, the Zoom chat. And there we Tell go. me if you can get that, Elena. Two backer monsters and... added to the book. Oh, wow. Hey. Is this 500? Awesome. Yes. Yep. So that's cool. Twenty five hundred. Everybody, start brainstorming now. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean that's a great that's a great point actually. Brainstorm in the comments at the Kickstarter and 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 you know you'll get some great ideas probably from so from, from folks to kind of you know, or they'll steal your ideas yeah, yeah. one way or the other. Um, <laughs> but you know just design yours better or you know or or, or we might already have it in the book. That's true. It's too. possible. Actually, there there, you, know, and, yeah. you know, there was like eight so, in the steam engine at the same time, you know, unbeknownst to one another. So, you know, there's yeah. this thing as, you know, simultaneous creativity. Yeah. So, to answer Lupus Malum, they're organized alphabetically, except there will be an appendix at the back that includes um, the uh, stretch goal monsters and backer design mo monsters, mostly because we want to be able to start on the layout and not have to like reorganize everything because somebody just added a J or something. Like a jackal wear. <laughs> yeah. Now yeah. we have to redo that whole chapter. <laughs> but we do plan to have tables and charts in the back that will organize the monsters also by type, challenge rating, yes. terrain, and all that good stuff. So, so you'll get you'll get that too. So Chris, tell me about your your show, Monsters and Charts. Oh yeah. So um one of the shows, so we have the spreadsheet to end all spreadsheets for this project uh, that we've been working <laughs> on. Um and we just keep adding fields to and adding fields to. It's actually getting quite unwieldy. Uh so on March sixth at eight PM Eastern Standard Time, um myself and co-host Rick from Talking PSR, we are gonna host an entire show on essentially throwing graphs and charts at you from the book things like here's all the monsters by cr here's all the monsters by terrain and everything and uh, i've already started putting some of the charts together we're gonna have some really fun charts so um it's gonna be it's gonna be a blast it'll be a little tongue-in-cheek but you know for those folks who like the analytics of to see uh, exactly how many cr14 monsters am i getting you know so we'll have that answer for you and of course the answer will then not be true because backers will create <laughs> monsters <laughs> um you know so uh but it'll be for the the core monsters in the book though everything except for the ones that are that are created afterwards and it'll probably by the time we get to march 6th um you know it's it's gonna probably include the the stretch goal monsters in there too so oh, cool that would be fun so elena if you can bring up the dungeon denizen has a treasure hoard sticker so lester the layout wizard who designed this awesome t-shirt also made this Random sticker, just because he thought it'd be fun. And this is uh, Steve. Yeah, Steve, Steve the Lizard Man slash Zopo Lani slash whatever. Anyway, I don't know where to put this sticker in the project, but it's just so cool. <laughs> I wanted to like work this in somewhere. So uh, we'll probably make this like a free bonus sticker at some point or something. I don't know, why did I even bring this up? Somebody made me think about this. No idea. Uh... But anyway, that's Steve and his cool sticker. Expected completion dates. Um, I think it was tomorrow, right, Chris and Mike? Yeah, yeah, just yeah about exactly. Done. It's going. Ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no uh, I think we put July twenty four. The July twenty twenty four is the delivery date. Um, we're getting faster and better at fulfilling Kickstarters, so we actually have all prior Kickstarters either printed or at the printer right now, except for Dark Tower, which is the one that's actually I, I have to post an update, but. 
the art's like 80% complete. There's tons of amazing art. So I actually think by the time this one gets, you know, by the time this project ends on March uh, 21st, I think it is, mm -hmm. we'll actually be in a really good shape to start layout very soon after. Um, but anyway, the official posted date is July 2024 fulfillment. We're hoping to beat that. Yeah, but all the monsters have been created. Um, we're just working through the layout and the art. And again, art, uh, 500 yeah. plus pieces of art, all color. Um, that's that's what's that's a that, that's what we're at right now. So we're we're in really good shape on these, and we'll be sharing some of the the designs as we move along during the uh, uh, during the Kickstarter. So you guys can can get some previews of a few of them. And Gora Tricks Five Twelve asked about Roll Twenty. Um, yeah, so we went back and forth. We didn't actually put it as part of the pledge items, mostly because we just launched our first Roll Twenty support. What like three or four weeks ago? I think was the fifth edition two. fantasy. Two weeks ago. Two, okay, so two, yeah. <laughs> so we're not quite ready to make it uh, that much of a commitment, but we are intending to add a lot more to Roll20 in the background over the coming six to 12 months or so, and this will probably be one of them over time. Yeah. There'll definitely be token packs that you'll be able to get yeah. um, for use. But yeah, we, we've been discussing about, I mean, doing something like a huge monster book like this and getting it into the compendiums, it, it's it's a very time consuming process. So um, yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna look into it. We have we have a lot of things that we we want to do on Roll Twenty. It's just that you know it's just there's only so many contractors and hours in the day. <laughs> Mike, somebody asked if there's any good monsters for the Shutter Mountains. Of course there are. <laughs> Shutter Mountains are a freaky place, you know. <laughs> so, um, you know, I mean, I, I don't think there's anything directly brought from um, from existing folklore, but yeah, I mean, you're, you'll you'll find stuff in there that you can easily insert in there. So, actually, actually, I think of one right now, the Living Stew Pot. <laughs> so, so, which, which is which is which is literally what it sounds like it's like a big 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 stew pot except it's alive and it chases you around and tries to grab you with its ladle and and you know put you inside of its big <laughs> body so you know so yeah that, that would work well for like you know any sort of like you know witch's coven or anything like that be, you, you could be like a lawn uh like it's like a lawn ornament for the garden elf so you know so like the, the living <laughs> stew pot is chasing you so you go inside the house and the house is alive and eats you so there you go. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> Mike, can we get that with like a gluten-free option? The, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I don't know. It's just, it's just a stretch goal. We'll put it on there, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, gluten-free edition. <laughs> uh, grievously Gruntled is hoping for a dire corrosion bunny, not a rust monster. And I say we do not have a dire corrosion bunny. We do have a rust <laughs> spider, and we do have a demonic squirrel. So... We're we're getting around there, so um, or <laughs> so there's there's a niche that needs to be filled, basically. Yes, <laughs> without a doubt. And then Jib Cutter is in there with um, plans on using some of these newer monsters in future Goodman Games published adventures. Um, you don't realize it, but it's already been happening. <laughs> So yes, a lot of the the designers uh, for the, on the five E side, a lot of the designers that worked on this book, uh, we are over twenty people um, that did uh, five E designs on this book. Uh, several of them are still working on other projects for us. We we got them in the open call that we did in late twenty twenty, early twenty twenty one. Um, and they've now moved on after they did their monsters, they've moved on and they've been creating their own, um, and, you know, a lot of them adventures and, and contributing to other parts of the books. And yes, they have utilized some of their monsters in some of their designs they are coming out. Um, and also, if you grab one of our other FEF modules, you'll probably notice some familiar ones in there as well. So yes, already done. So, so some of them have even, some of them have even snuck in a dark tower. Yes. Yep. They have. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> and vice versa, and yeah, and uh, yeah. So they they were out there. Yeah, cavern caverns. There's a couple. There's a couple in caverns as well. So you know, yes, so they, they're slowly decimating. They're yep. decimating out into uh, the world. But place. that's our hope. Our hope is once we have this big fat book out there, that yes, that our writers are going to use it. And and right now, I get the writers when they're like. They will come to me and they'll pitch a particular adventure and then they'll they'll have a monster in there and I'll say, oh, I'm like, that's cool. But I'm like, hey, but could you consider using this guy? And then I'll send them the stats. Um, and they're like, oh, yeah, that's perfect. So, uh, so yeah, so we're already starting to work work them in there without a doubt. And um, who had the question? Oh, I just lost it. Uh, yes, Hide and Geek. Uh, we pick shirt sizes later with the backer kit, correct? And I believe that is correct. That is correct. Yeah. 
Um, and if you want, so during the pandemic, it was actually really hard to get specialized sizes, you know, tall or some of the larger sizes that's easing up right now. Um, so we should be able to, I mean, by the time we get there, we'll know for sure, but I'm hopeful that we're past all those supply chain problems and we should be able to get you. If you happen to be tall or need, you know, any sort of size, we can hopefully get it for you. For your arms. Yeah. <laughs> arm hole in there. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and, you know, Mike, somebody asked about Purple Planet. I feel like I, I'm should... on record as saying that, it, that there will be a reprint of Purple Planet. You know, I, I don't you know go. how much more I'm allowed to reveal about that, but yeah, this it's 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 in the works, and you know, when, when uh, it, I wouldn't lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I was wondering, this is totally unrelated, but since all these fine people are taking time out of their morning, should we maybe preview the Purple Planet cover art or not? What do you think? You know, I mean, I I, I think we can do that. Let me see, Elena, let me uh, copy this link and send it to you in the chat. Um, make sure it's not a TIFF file. It is a TIFF file. <laughs> 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 Do you have to like convert it or something? <laughs> Sorry, that's all I got. All right, I sent it to you. Do you Wait, convert. It was a PNG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I oh, I see uh, 20 sides to every stories in the chat. Um, Alex, if that's you. Um, hey, Alex. Why don't you throw the dates down um, and the times for your planned live throughs for uh, Dungeon Denizens? We're going to get that on the uh, on the uh, the Kickstarter page at some point. Uh, for those you don't know, oh, yeah, 20... his live playthroughs, yeah, yeah. yes. So there's going to be a couple of live playthroughs where uh, the Twenty Sides Every Story gang uh, during the the running of the Kickstarter, they're actually going to run through some of the uh, two page delves that have been created. So super excited about that. That is awesome. <clears throat> Are there any plans to reprint DCC merch, coffee mugs, windshield stickers, Mike's shirt? Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, we reprint shirts usually for Gen Con each year, or not reprint, I mean, produce new shirts. No specific plans to reprint older ones. Um, and we've done coffee mugs. The trouble with those is they break. Like we've done very different, actually, I have one around here somewhere. We've done iterations of coffee mugs and like steins and stuff which are awesome, but shipping them to Gen Con and then getting them home, they half of them break on the way to Gen Con, then customers tell us, you know, some of them break on the way home. So they're they're just tough to do. Um, shirts don't break? <laughs> <laughs> only in your, like, your Lou Fregno Incredible Hulk moments, you know? <laughs> His official Goodman game box of broken glass. That's it. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah it. exactly. Uh, it's, a, it's a funnel. <laughs> Who survives the broken glass? Comes, comes with a custom D20 right in the middle of it. You have to go in there and grab it. That's <laughs> it. Um, so, uh, so uh, Jim Cutter, back both uh, DCC and 5e books. Maybe an odd question, but what system do you think would take less work from a backer standpoint to convert to BX and OSR system? The easiest way to do that is basically is to buy DCC rulebook and learn to play that. And then you can use the monster without any concept of conversion whatsoever. That's it. It's, it doesn't happen. <laughs> but, um, but uh, and honestly, and honestly, I think it's probably easier to convert the DCC version over to BX or OS, uh, OSE just because the stat block is about the size of a BX OSE stat block. Yeah. So, Agreed. And it's, it's, you know, to find spots free if they got special stuff. So. All right. And folks, we're going to wrap it up soon um, so that we, you know, give everybody time to pledge. <laughs> Don't want to take too much time out of your day. Um, we well, maybe we'll show this Purple Planet art once the file gets converted properly. And then a, a coffee mug koozie. Oh, interesting. That's a fascinating idea. Yeah, didn't you guys do koozies before? Well, we did like koozie koozies, not coffee mug koozies. Oh, oh I mean, that's that's like, you know, like. Nice. Is there even such a thing? <laughs> <laughs> we can invent it. It's a, and and is, is it, I've always said it was a cozy, but uh, you know, so <laughs> is this, is this, is this a regional thing? <laughs> is like Hogan Sons and Riders or, you know, like, <laughs> but it's a cozy or a koozie? <laughs> oh. It's got two O's, you know, so I think it's koozie. I said cozy for a long time too, until I saw it spelled that way. I don't know. I don't know. Oh my. Uh, what about DCC green cards? Well, if you pick up, <laughs> if you pick up the Valentine's Day adventure, uh, you know, not only not only does that come with, uh, I believe, it was like uh, if I said either eight or nine uh, uh, Valentine's Day cards on the inside front cover, but you would actually, while supplies last, you can get an actual Valentine's Day card thrown in with your order if you order it through the good. We Bay. actually have some. They're left in the store. Hold on, I drop it. There you go. Get yourself a free Valentine's Day card. <laughs> There's still some remaining. <laughs> so. 
Um, Did you see uh, Bob the Magic Cone steal coffee mugs? That solves the shattered glass issue. <laughs> I'm sure freight will be cheap. We have a lot of manufacture like next door, so there's no freight cost and no insulation whatsoever. <laughs> just, yes. just, just fill that steel object with piping hot vinegar and then grab it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> no handles. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Mike, Elena, I sent her the, the cover art to Purple Planet. So, Doug did these two covers for the Purple Planet reprint. Um, I sent her, I think we haven't decided which one's front or back, but I sent her one of them, which is probably the front or maybe the back. Uh, I don't know. So, Elena, do you want to flash that one? This is for whoever it was who asked like a while back about is there going to be a DCC Purple Planet reprint? The I answer is yes. I believe that's the one we're using for the front. Okay. Um, and here's one of Doug's images. He actually painted this a while ago. Uh, so that's going to be coming down the pike later on this year. But yes, Purple Planet will live again in hardcover format with all sorts of cool stuff. Yep. Mm. There's going to be a lot to it. It's a, we're going to do something special for it, but we can't talk about that just yet. But you know, we yeah. I forgot about you. you know, I, yeah, I promise. I promise that we're coming back. You know, it just it just took one of those things. I announced it last year that we'd be coming back. So it's just one of those things. Is you know things things change. <laughs> yeah. We we, well, we, we, we to deliver wanted on. to develop. We, have to deli we wanted to develop. We wanted to you know deliver some of these kickstarters before we started you know launching some more ones. Exactly. So. Yeah. Oh, it's my bird is unlocked. Okay, awesome. Unlocking stretch goals and opening up. Uh, awesome. And open up possibilities for backer design monsters. That's great. <laughs> Bob the magic one. Nice Ivert. I like it. All right, cool. So I think we should probably wrap it up here. You guys had a lot of great questions and thank you for calling out some of the technical difficulties that we have hopefully now fixed. Um feel free as always to message us on Kickstarter or email us on you know info goodman dash dot games or find us on Twitter, Facebook, Discord, our forums. There's so many ways MySpace. to get a hold of people now. Like MySpace. Oh yeah, we're totally on MySpace. We're on AOL. <laughs> Um, we have letters. I just got a letter. Uh, I won't show who this is from, but yes, we still get letters occasionally from people. Um, if you have a question, feel free to mail us the letter. <laughs> <laughs> It'll get right on it. <laughs> this Kickstarter. Especially if you don't want an answer for a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, if you if you're going to mail us something, please include a self self address stamp envelope. So you know, like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you, everybody, for supporting us. It. Awesome to see it's off to a great start. And we will try to do you guys right and make an awesome book that everybody loves. Or technically, two awesome books, one for each system. Yeah. Four if you count alternate covers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And dust jackets. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. Thanks, everybody. All right.